the news tonight. Ogun State Government says Interstate Rail Project a strategy for southern development. Joint Border Patrol team intercepts about 4,000 jerry cans of petrol, arrests five suspects in Lagos. Plus, Saudi Authority to spend 300 billion naira to upgrade Nigerian pilgrims' tent at Muna, Saudi Arabia. Good evening and welcome to the news at 7. My name is Onyi Konsola Ojelade. Ogun State Government says interstate rail system is a deliberate attempt to develop the southern part of the country. The special advisor to Governor Dakwa Biodo on media and strategy, Kayodi Akimade, stated this while speaking on the topic regional integration and development, the case of Ogun State, at a retreat in Abelkuta, Ogun State. He explains that upon assumption of office in 2019, the state government came up with the idea of speedy development through the concept of multimodal transport management system, which connects the state with other parts of the region through air, water, rail and road, and as well gives access to the rest of the world. Mr. Akimade notes that with railway connect interconnectivity, development in the southwest will be faster with the movement of people and goods easier. He acknowledges that the interstate rail system that cuts across the southwest has been efficiently explored by Ogun State's government for effective connectivity in the region. The special advisor states that oil exploration will soon commence in the state and will put the region on a more viable economic footing. He adds that the agro-cargo airport by Ogun State's government will serve as a tool for regional development and will assist in, con inter in connecting the region with the rest of the world. The special advisor disclosed that government had constructed over 500 kilometers of roads across the state to make mobility easier and connect other states more effectively, adding that the roads had made regional in integration possible considering the strategic location of Ogun State in the region. Moving on, the Nigerian Union of Pensioners, Ogun State branch, has felicitated with the governor of Ogun State, Dako Abiodun, on his emergence at the, as the chairman of the Southern Governors Forum. In a letter written to the governor by the union and jointly signed by its chairman, Comrade Waid Uluidi, and the secretary, Comrade Bola Lawal, the senior citizens describe the appointment as a well-deserved honor born out of the feats recorded in the governance of the state. They added that the governor's unparalleled kindness and generosity to the people was a testament to his many awards and recognitions. The elder statesman further notes that the governor's consequential successes were not a surprise as he governs with the fear of God and prayed for more honors as he continually renders service to humanity. In other news, while enforcing its anti-smuggling measures along the border in southwest region of the country, the Joint Border Patrol team of the Nigerian Customs Service says about 4,000 jerry cans of petrol were intercepted in one week, while five suspects were arrested in connection with various infractions. The coordinator of the team, Mohamed Tribal, disclosed this while highlighting the unit's anti-smuggling drive. Michael Olale has details. Recognizing the effect of trans-border crime on national security and economic growth, the Joint Border Patrol team was established by the federal government to curb smuggling and combat any acts threatening revenue generation and peaceful business environments. By keeping to this mandate, the team intercepted more than 3,700 jerry cans of petrol, about 4,000 bags of foreign rice, among others, with duty paid value of 1.1 billion naira. Whatever means we can make use of, we'll make use of it so that we can get what we want to do in Nigeria. So you can see, Kekane Pep is meant for passengers. And the passenger, how many is it not carrying? Just not, not more than three, four passengers. But now this is also carrying about 50 cakes or so. This Kekane Pep. The driver, of course, of course, very easy for him to go. In fulfilling the objectives of the team, which include checking entry of illegal migrants into the country, the Sector 2 of the Joint Border Patrol made some arrests. We intercepted 30 illegal migrants suspected to have violated immigration laws and were immediately handed over 
to the Nigeria Immigration Service for further investigation and prosecution. While demonstrating the commitment to read the borderline along the southwest geopolitical zone of smuggling activities, the team said about 12 million naira was recovered through the issuance of demand notices on vehicles and other goods not properly imported into the country. In Lagos, Michael Olale, NT News. Companies found compromising on safety standards in iron and steel manufacturing sector will face the full wrath of the law upon completion of investigations into alleged sharp practices in the manufacturing of steel products in the country by the Federal Competition and Consumer Protection Commission, FCCPC. This is to address incessant building collapse in the country as the commission went out on surveillance operations to three steel companies in Ogun State. Amaka Oko reports. Media reports show that Nigeria recorded the highest incident of building collapse in Africa in 2023. Tackling these menace headlong remains the priority of the federal government. This has necessitated operators of the Federal Competition and Consumer Protection Commission to swing into action. This time, they have beamed such light into activities of steel manufacturing industries in Nigeria. We've got intelligence and surveillance reports that uh, the companies in question are involved in some anti-competitive behavior and that is the reason why we decided to come to three out of the many companies that are here in Lagos so we can take a sample and see what it is that they do by going through the records that we get from them as well as look at the end products that uh, come out of their systems here. Uh, you see what is happening is there is uh, false, misleading and deceptive as well as unfair market practices. Uh, you go into the market to buy an iron rod of 12 mm for instance. Uh, when they produce, what you get is 10, not 12. And this is what is uh, the main reason that leads to all these building collapses that we have in the country. The Commission says the investigations are ongoing and will involve the contributions of forensic experts as Federal Competition and Consumer Protection Commission is saddled with a mandate to protect the consuming population. The Commission remains resolute in enforcement of safety in the steel manufacturing industry. In Lagos, Amaka O, NT News. Meanwhile, all contractors handling the East-West Road and the Calabar E2 Highway will have their contact, contracts terminated by July the 5th if they fail to mobilize to sites. Minister of Works, Senator Nweze David Umahi, handed down the warning at the stakeholders' engagement on the alignment of sections 3B and 4 of Lagos Calabar Coastal Superhighway. Clement Barakui has details. Out of 700 kilometers of the Lagos Calabar Coastal Highway, 107 kilometers covering sections 3B and 4 are in Aquaibom State, and once procurements are completed, work will commence simultaneously on all the subsections. Minister of Works, Senator Wes David Omani, while briefing the stakeholders on other federal projects in Aquaibom State, says termination notice has been issued to contractors handling a section of the east-west road as well as the Calabai to highway for not returning to site despite the huge payment from the federal government. Every contractor that wants to continue the games as before, we're going to terminate the project and we're going to reward it. And uh, we are going to do everything to encourage local contractors. We will support them to build them so that they can compete with the expatriate contractors. But no more games. Senate President Gasula Pabio, who led other National Assembly members from the region, appreciates President Bola Tinubu for his passion towards the completion of the three renewed Hope Road Infrastructure Legacy Projects. Now that the federal government has remembered us, God has made the federal government to remember us. Through President Bola Metunibu, I came to make a special appeal that there is need to give total cooperation to the construction companies that will handle these sections of the coastal roads. 
We need peace to complete the job on time. That will cooperate with you at any time and in whichever way you want so that we can actualize the vision of Mr. President on this coastal road. The Minister of Works thereafter made a stopover at the Kalabaitu Highway where he expressed disappointment over the attitude of the contractors in making the road more terrible, directing an immediate remedial measure to salvage the situation. Clement Barikui, NTA News. Moving on. Former aide to immediate past President Muhammad Buhari on National Assembly matters, Senator Ita Enang, has tasked Nigerian engineers to rise up to the challenge of resuscitating the Nigerian economy to flourish. This charge came as he lectured on intellectual property rights in mechan mechanical engineering practice, providing an effective legal framework at the Nigerian Institution of Mechanical Engineers Conferment of Fellowship held in Abuja. Justin Bem Uni reports. The Engineers Act 2019, as amended, empowers and enables the practice of engineering to be more effective in Nigeria. By this, experts say the law has now provided an enabling environment for the engineering profession in Nigeria to flourish without hindrance. This laid foundation for discourse at the Nigerian Institution of Mechanical Engineers Confirmant of Fellowship. This idea of protecting intellectual properties has been altered and severely challenged by information technology and further by the advent of artificial intelligence. Senator Itai Nang, through a lecture on intellectual property rights and mechanical engineering practice, providing an effective legal framework, challenged the engineering professionals to wake up and ensure this law is implemented to the fullest. That Nigerian engineering system should help stand up and help the Nigerian economy. That as of today, the intellectual, the, the, we are importing refined petroleum products, whether we have mechanical, chemical, and all kinds of, and all fields of engineers practicing. The senator raised concerns on the sabotage of smooth operations of some indigenous oil refineries in the country. Does, whatever business, whatever challenge does uh, Bangote face in his business, he finds a way around it and never raise alarm. For him to raise this alarm, that a lot is wrong, that Nigerian engineers and the Nigerian public should wake up to protect that refinery. Otherwise, we will find it in a bad shape. Uh, this is a wake-up call for us. But before he does that, actually, we uh, we have uh, through the uh, Council for the Revolution of Internet in Nigeria, which is our regulatory body, in collaboration with Nigerian Social Engineers and all divisions of Nigerian Social Engineers. We are actually making uh, moves. 25 engineers were deserved worthy by the Nigerian Institution of Mechanical Engineers and conferred with fellowship at the ceremony with a call to contribute immensely to the development of the profession in the country. Justin Bem Unyi, NTA News. Cheering news for the 2025 Nigerian intending pilgrims as the Saudi Authority is set to spend 300 billion naira for the upgrade of the Nigerian tents at the holy site of Muna. Chairman of the company responsible for providing services to the Nigerian pilgrims at the holy sites, Dr. Ahmad Sindi made this known while playing host to the Nakon and State Hajj officials and the tour operators in Jeddah. Correspondent Jamilu Ibrahim reports. Located about 8 kilometers southeast of the city of Makkah, covered in an area of approximately 20 square kilometers. It is a place where the pilgrims spend three to four days during the annual pilgrimage to Saudi Arabia, as it has more than 10,000 air conditioned tents that could accommodate up to 3 million people. It has been, however, observed that over the years the services been rendered to the Nigerian pilgrims at this holy site are bedeviled with several challenges, especially in the areas of bed spaces and toilet facilities. Now, the company appointed by the Saudi Ministry for Hajj and Umrah Affairs to provide these essential services to the Nigerian pilgrims says these challenges will be addressed squarely ahead of the 2025 Hajj. We have learned many good lessons 
at an event to mark the completion of the 2024 Hajj season held in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia. Chairman of the company said 200 million US dollars have been set aside for the upgrade of the Nigerian pilgrims' tents at Muna. As we have set aside the money. We are in active discussion this evening. We will be going and meeting with the, one of the vendors to discuss the exact details. Truthfully, there's tremendous progress. Truthfully, there are some observations which you admitted. And I think together as partners, we should be looking at the positives and see how we can improve on them and excel even beyond what we imagine we can do. The company recognizes NACON and the state officials as well as the tour operators for their efforts towards the success of this year's Hajj operation and implores them to do better. Uh, for 2022, 2023 operations, we all know that um, after the Alpha, we all run to their office complaining of the services that they did not render and were demanding for our refund. But today, as you can, as you all witness, we're here just having a kind of lima because of the success we recorded. It is the consensus of all stakeholders here that the 2024 Hajj is a huge success. They are, however, not oblivious of the fact that there is room for improvement. From Jeddah in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, Jamilu Ibrahim, NTA News. Operatives of the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, NDLEA, intercepts 7.3 billion Naira codeine consignments as two persons excrete 150 cocaine wraps in Lagos. Sawa Khalil brings us weekly updates. The report. Operatives of the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, NDLEA, have intercepted six containers of 6,000 125 cartons of codeine worth more than 7 billion naira in street value at the Port Harcourt complex Orne, River State. This is the third of such seizure in the past four weeks. Meanwhile, NDLEA officers at the Murtala Mohammed International Airport, Ikeja, Lagos, have arrested two passengers traveling to Doha who, after screening, tested positive to ingestion of illicit substances. On Friday, 21st June, one excreted 90 wraps of cocaine, while the other discharged 60 wraps of the same class of substance. No less than 40.3 kg of loud and imported strong strain of cannabis was on Friday, 28th June, recovered in a black Toyota Tacoma truck along Glecky Ikoyi Road when the driver jumped off the vehicle after noticing that NDLEA operatives were on his trail. In Abuja, NDLEA operatives on Friday night disrupted a drug party tagged Go Hard or Go Home, Pick Your Poison, where 60 suspects comprising 25 males and 35 females were arrested at an apartment in Sun City Estate in the Federal Capital Territory. The raid followed credible intelligence about the drug party. While some people embark on the business of illicit substances, the anti-narcotic agency and the LEA says it is ahead and will net perpetrators whenever, wherever. In Abuja, Salwa Khalil Ibrahim, NTA News. And this wraps it up for the news at 7. My name is Oyi Konsola Otoladi. To stay tuned for Omolara Yusuf as she brings the Yoruba News Package. Good night.
Funera welcome credit. You just carry your phone. Dial star 777 Ash. Bring me. Gulo, you don't win. Oh, now see there yet. <laughs> Hello. Please, I'm looking for Glow. Please save now. Glow be day five. Now Glow be day go. Okay, so Enjoy 10 times the value of your recharge on Glow Barricade 10x. You also get 1,000 naira for calls and data and double data bonus on your subscription. <laughs>